Hello, and welcome to episode 226 of The Joy of Coding. My name is Mike Conley, and I look like I have some sort of weird disease. Hold on one second. Let me just try and change my color. Balance one sec. There is. There we go. There we go. My bad. Sorry about that. Um, I don't. And my hair. What's going on here? Is this like a weird comb over? Okay, uh, welcome to episode 226 of The Joy of Coding. My name is Mike Conley. We're gonna be hacking on Firefox stuff today. I hope you're excited to get into it. Um, thank you for being here. Let's do it. Let's do this thing. Um, so let me share my screen. One sec. Uh, okay, so this is the agenda. If you're new to the stream, if you're you know new to the series, uh, let me just tell you something that I say every time, which is that no plan survives breakfast. I kind of know what I want to do during this stream. Actually, this is one of those streams where I haven't prepared anything, so I'm going to be kind of making it up really as I go um, and, and really trying to sort of feel it out. Um, I don't I have like one thing that I want to do, but we'll, we'll find work. Don't worry. There's plenty of it. Um, the other thing is that the agenda that we're looking at is something that you have access to. If you're watching this on Air Mozilla, check out the handout section. If you're watching this on uh, Twitch, well, I'm about to drop the uh, the link into the Twitch chat. Hold on. Uh, whoops, see Daisy. Here it is. Here it goes into the Twitch chat agenda. And if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, I still haven't figured out a great way of putting the link into the description while I'm streaming. Uh, the new YouTube streaming UI, not so good, not so good. Uh, but I have figured out why I wasn't streaming on YouTube last time. There's a big like, there's an extra step now where you have to like opt into going live. So I've done that now. So hopefully if you're watching this on YouTube, you are watching this on YouTube. And uh, if you're hoping for that link, well, you can go to the Watch People Code subreddit and find the link there, or you could go to Twitch instead, or you just wait until the recording's posted and you'll have a link to the agenda. Sorry. Uh, hopefully, I'll figure it out uh, how, to, how to supply that link later on. For the folks who do have access to the agenda, you'll note that there is an episode guide. There is a completely viewer-driven episode guide. Uh, thank you to all the people who contribute to the episode guide. In fact, let's take a quick peek at it. It's been a while. Uh, we've got all the way up into episode 223, which was, uh, let's see, we're on 20. So we're missing a couple. We're missing three episodes. But I believe there are some in the hopper. We can take a look at those now. There's a pull request, 224 and 225 from Smurf D. Booyah Shaka. So the two that we are missing, Smurf D delivering. Let's take a quick peek here and let's see if we can get these merged in. So on episode 224, that happened on August 26th, right? Yes. And uh, let's see here. Uh, again, I always like to make sure that the links... Whoa, what, what happened there? The links are right. So let's just quickly check the links. Episode two... Oh! Hang on, did I have the wrong link here? 224 is what it's supposed to be. Strange, it's linking to 226, which is right now. Or is that because the episode was incorrectly named 226 in Air Mozilla? That could be. Let's let's watch this video real quick. I'll mute it, but maybe uh if I yeah, it's pre-recorded. This isn't today's episode. So I think this is right. It's just there's a bad title up here. And uh, I can probably edit that maybe later. But that link is correct. Good job. And uh, let's take a look at the agenda. Link here. Also correct. What do we cover? Uh, we were doing the BHR stuff. And uh, we might end up doing some of that today. Who knows? And the Phoenix issue, we're talking about Phoenix and allowing temporary add-ons to be installed in Nightly. I think there's also a plan to allow about config in Phoenix Nightly. That may or may not already be the case. Um, let me just quickly check. I have Nightly on my phone. Let me see if it's already there. About colon config. Yes, it is there. 
So if you are on Nightly, you can use about config there. Uh, the UX, yeah, the mute mic and mute camera, uh, the mute toggles. I think that stuff has landed. I talked about ginger beer, um, how to file better performance related bugs. Uh, there's a there is a typo here. I am gonna correct. So hold on. Um, gonna quickly add a space as well. If you want to help influence Mozilla's decisions, enable telemetry. That's just a pro tip because we are very uh, um, you know we we like to users say things. They don't always do what they say. Um, they say they want something and then they never use it, or they say that they, um, they do a thing and then the data is like, well, they never do it. And the reason we know that they never do it or they don't, you know, that there's a disparity there is because of telemetry. And it's possible that there's a, an entire block of users who do certain things, but we don't know about it because telemetry is disabled for them. And so we don't count them in our like decision making for like broad sort of decision making because we try and be data driven um because the people who comment in reddit and on twitter and on forums they're very self-selected uh, you know that these are this is a type of user that that or or comments in bugzilla you know they self-select to a particular um, sort of user population and they might not represent the opinions attitudes and needs of the broader wider firefox communities that's why we use telemetry to make our decisions and so in order to make sure that you are part of the the data set so that you help influence our decisions you should enable telemetry now i understand that some people are concerned about the privacy um, implications of enabling telemetry and that's fine you don't have to enable it uh, on release like there's there's different tiers of telemetry and i think you uh, um, you opt in to sending us additional telemetry uh, on nightly you send us everything uh, so like what i'm trying to say is if you really want to help influence our decisions opt into that telemetry uh, if you want to customize your new tab page there is a an add on there i did a wrap i think okay so this looks good that looks good so i'm gonna commit my change i'm gonna fix a quick set of typos and we're gonna commit directly Okay, and then for this other uh, this other episode guide here, there was uh, September second, episode two twenty five. That sounds right. Let's quickly check the. the yeah, that's right. I had uh, shorter hair. I still have kind of sh actually. Am I wearing the same shirt? I might be wearing the same shirt. How many times have I worn this shirt? Let me know in the comments below. I don't know. You don't have to do that. Um, but that looks good. And uh, I'm not sure why I'm wearing my headphones too, because uh, uh, I guess I have these on for music, but I don't know. I don't need to wear my headphones. I'll take those off. Uh, September 2nd, that is the correct episode guy or a correct agenda. Mike is streaming from home. No episode next week. That's correct. Okay. I did end up filing a bug for the system tray icon stuff. We're going to talk about that today. I did a rap for Nathan Alexander, Nick Alexander, sorry, not Nathan, Nick Alexander. Uh, I went on the left side. Yeah, I we might do that again today. Um, this looks very similar, actually, to episode 224. Did I just kind of like smash the two of them together? Or did I cover this stuff? I feel like this is a mixture of the two of the two episodes. I don't think I talked about ginger beer and telemetry and stuff. Um, so I'm going to update this one as well. So I'm going to get rid of these things because they were in the other episode guide. Do, do, do. Okay. And the rest of the stuff, I'm pretty, I haven't been checking the forms. I should be checking the forms. Let me check this one. Is this the right form? Episode. 225 yeah looks good looks good let's do it uh remove some leftovers that's not a very good commit message but hey it's the episode guide uh this is great thank you so much smurf d we're gonna merge these in uh say thanks always say thank you to your contributors 
and bablamo there we go episode guide updated done what are we doing today uh, today, I'm hoping we can work on... Well, that's actually a surprise. I expected this to be broken. September 15th. Okay. Um, there is some stuff I've been working on that you might remember from last week uh, related to uh, WebRTC. Let me try and catch you up to where I'm at. Do you remember back in the day... Do you remember back in the day we were working on the indicator to show users that you're sharing your microphone or your camera or something. And it was like smack dab in the middle of the screen. And for the longest time, we've had this like little orange notch at the top. And we've been trying to find like the right balance of like telling the user that they are sharing a device, which is important. The user needs to know that, but also getting out of their way and not, you know, not exposing things that are annoying. And so the, uh, the balance that we've struck is that we want to uh, show the user that little indicator if they're sharing their screen, but uh, and if we want to give them global toggle mute, like global mute toggles. Now those global mute toggles, which we were working on for a while, they're not perfect because there are a lot of sites that don't update their UIs if we mute, and you know that that's not great. So we we're gonna pref off the global mutes by default, which means that we won't show the indicator unless you're sharing a screen. Let me demonstrate. So let's go to Talkie. I'm gonna start a chat. And now I have a fake camera called a virtual webcam on my Windows VM, or this is my Windows box at the Toronto office. So I'm gonna allow. Now notice the no indicators showing up. Also notice, oh, I'm gonna to have to move my, my head here. Hold on a sec. Whoop. That a very hard to see icon has, has appeared here and it says you're sharing your camera click to control sharing and if I click that uh, it brings up this menu that allows me to control the sharing and then we've had this on Mac OS for a while and this is the thing I've been working on now that icon is not super visible and I'm waiting on a better icon um, or one that is more visible and is going to be flexible for both bright and dark backgrounds but that's what we've currently got now let's let's join the call and now let's say that I share my screen. Let's share talkie. We'll share our own screen. And then that puts this thing up here. So it tells us that we're sharing our screen. And I'm also sharing my camera. Note, however, that uh, you know we've got this now sharing a window or screen icon in here as well. They're kind of folded up. Windows makes decisions about what shows up down here. And that's not a thing we can really influence. But uh, we're now showing indicators for camera and screen. And if I click on any of these, I get, oh, that, that's a bug. That's a bug. I don't think, uh, why is that opening all the way down there? I also don't think that there's something, I don't think it's clickable. I think that's why we expose this thing. But that might actually be a bug that's always existed because I have a feeling we have a similar problem on Mac OS. But for here, we can also control the sharing of the uh, of the camera. It's a little bit, you know, it's not perfect. I'm not entirely certain that this position of the uh, of the indicator is the right one, docked at the very top. No matter what, you're going to get in the way. That's the problem, uh, and that's the balance of this of this whole project is like trying to. And it's similar to what we do with picture in picture. You want to tell the user, you want to empower the user, you want to give them stuff so that they can like control their experience, but you also want to stay out of their way, stay out of their way. And trying to find a balance there is tricky. So uh, anyways, we're going to try this out. I think we're going to try and let this ship. We might need to fix some bugs here because like these icons need to be updated and this experience when you click and like no menu item shows up under here, that's no good. And the fact that the menu also shows up kind of over here is strange. Um, it'd be great. It'd be much better if it showed up like <laughs> where you clicked. Uh, so that I'm going to need to sort out. Um, maybe we can do that today. Maybe we can do that today. But then you can stop sharing your screen. And then that icon should go away. And then you're just sharing your camera and I can control my camera. So like, we're getting there. We're getting pretty close. We're getting pretty close. And uh, you know, if you close the tab, 
or let's say we stop sharing, we revoke the permission, then the icon should go away from the list. That works. And then, uh, you know, we're in, we're in decent shape. So I'm waiting on those icons. One of the things that, uh, so I've got a big stack of patches that lets us do this. I'm going to move my, uh, my head back. Hold on a second. Uh, T Bod T asks, why does Firefox not use native right click menus? And the reason for that is so that we can control them more. And so that we can style them using like the, the web engine. And that gives us a higher degree of flexibility when we draw them ourselves. It does mean, however, that whenever the native underlying, um, you know, when the native underlying platform style changes, we have to keep up. And that's not a thing we've, we've done so far very well on Windows 10. Like if you look at the context menu on Windows 10, uh, this is not what I think the typical context menu looks like on Windows anymore. Like let's let's open up a different context menu. I'll open up Finder. Well, it's not it's not bad. It's it's close, but not quite. It's similar. It's similar, but not quite. But like the ability for us to do this, for example, to offer this to put to put all these things in here, uh, that's because we're using the Gecko web engine to draw this pop up. Tbot says. It also looks wrong on Big Sur. Oh, on, on Mac OS. Yeah, for sure. So on Mac OS, we definitely draw them ourselves, at least the context menu. Uh, we draw this ourselves. And that's, again, for the, the higher degree of control. But yeah, we need to do a better job, I think, of, um, you know, you take on some responsibility when you draw it yourself, where you have to like keep up with the underlying platform. Um, so hopefully we'll, we'll update the menu styles to look correct on mac os soon someday you know patch is welcome I mean, i'm guessing there will be um bugs open and that sort of thing so what did i want to look at today well i so I, like i was saying there's a big stack of patches to make this uh this system tray thing happen uh here they are i'm implementing a system bar service for windows uh that actually uh that system bar service interface already existed. That's what we were, we were using on Mac OS already. I've just generalized it so we can use it on Windows. And then I implemented it for Windows and that got review. Um, this, I believe has review. I believe this now has review, though there are review comments for this one. So maybe we can address those today. And then this, uh, this one, also has review now the the prop so technically i have review on almost all of these things which is great tbot says so most pop-up menus follow the native theme automatically wouldn't it make more sense to use a native menu but with the top item as a custom view that lets you have these four buttons so that pop-up so most pop-up menus follow the native theme automatically maybe but it also you know that adds um you know we have We've always drawn our own menus, and so we would have to implement the capability for the front end to define those menus. And there's no time right now. We're we're trying to um, we're trying to like ship privacy features and like this WebRTC stuff. So maybe someday, but right now we just draw them ourselves. Wouldn't it make more sense? Maybe, but that's not what we're doing. Okay, so let's uh, let's see here. I have a feeling that this patch because I pushed them all to try. And they exploded on Windows and Mac OS. There was just like an explosion right here. And I'd like to find out why. Now, I just realized that it actually explodes whenever I try and build on Mac OS as well. It's complaining about icon loader helper Coco. So I think there are actually two problems. And I'm going to pull down these patches on Mac OS to investigate this one. And I'm also going to try and investigate these on uh, on Windows using my Windows machine. So I'm gonna be doing those at the same time. So let's get started. So the first thing is to make sure I've got the most up-to-date set of patches applied. Uh, if I look at my local tree, I've got some other stuff here. I've got some older versions of those patches. I'm actually going to uh, prune those. I'm gonna prune these three.
and then I'm going to update to this one because that's what it, it should be based on. And I'm going to apply a couple of these. Now it's complaining about uh, what one? Icon loader helper Coco. And that file got introduced which in which patch? The generalized icon loader service patch. So I'm going to apply these three. D89787, because that's the order that they come in, I'm pretty sure. Let's look at the stack. D89787, let's apply that first. Hold on. My, okay, T-Bot says, My personal feeling is Firefox has enough privacy features, and I'd be more excited about reducing UI jankiness. That's just me, though. Yeah, maybe. Um, you know, that's uh, that's a valid that's a valid point. Um you know, we're, we're limited in what we can do all at the same time. We work on the things that we think are important that our users need and require. Who knows? Maybe we'll, we'll prioritize UI jankiness, as you say. One of the things we are looking at, not like jank, jankiness is kind of a weird amorphous word. When we talk about jank in um, browser um, in browser engineering, at least in whenever we're talking about Firefox and Gecko, we're usually referring to uh, frame skipping in animations. We call that jank. What you're describing sounds almost like uh, like UI jankiness. Sounds like inconsistency, platform inconsistency, which is I, I wouldn't use the term jank for that. Like I, I I don't know if there's like a proper definition like for the word jank. But um, yeah, there is there are platform inconsistencies certainly, uh, you know, not just on macOS but on Windows as well. I do know that we are planning on respond uh, like uh, applying effort to UI responsiveness in the future. Um, that is a thing that we think users care about is UI responsiveness. I think we are less concerned that about UI consistency right now, at least cross platform. Um, at least that's our current position. Okay, so uh, mozfab patch apply to here. Danny Colon says, imagine on Linux. Yeah, <laughs> imagine platform consistency on Linux. It's really difficult because in Linux, you can just swap out the window manager to whatever you want. Ooh. That exploded. Why did that explode? Why did this not apply correctly? Do I need a rebit? <sighs> what? Bookmarking revisions. Patching. D897. Did it try and pull this down for some reason? It did. That's why it's complaining. Okay. Sorry. Revert all. I, I failed to... I failed to supply a, an important argument. That's fair. I guess the better word is unpolished. I suppose. Certainly those sorts of bugs should get filed. Um, like we... Uh, we want to... Uh, we want to be polished. We also want to be fast. We also want to be privacy preserving. We also want to be featureful and useful to the user. So many things to balance. So few hours in the day. You know? We, we have only so many people working on the browser. Maybe you, watching this video, are interested in UI polish. Perhaps you would like to work on this. Um, submit your patches to Mozilla. We want you. Okay, so let's do that again. But instead of saying apply to here, I'm also going to say skip dependencies. Skip dependencies. I just want the one patch. And then we're going to bring this one as well. Oops. T 
Theba T says, someday I want to send a patch to use the native pit machinery on Mac OS so it works well with spaces. Uh, I'm not entirely certain we'd accept that patch. One of the things that we're working on, uh, one, I'm, I'm helping mentor a set of students, is uh, the ability to do multiple picture-in-picture -picture windows, which definitely will not work with the Mac OS platform picture-in-picture -picture support. Um, plus, we want to add more controls to the picture-in-picture -picture player window. We want to add captions. Uh, we want to add a scrubber. That's not going to work with the Mac OS native picture-in-picture -picture player unless they've added an API that allows us to add those controls that I'm not familiar with. So I'm, I'm not sure we want to use the native picture-in-picture -picture player uh, window on Mac OS. All right, and we're going to apply this one. And then I think we'll have everything we need to create a debug build that fails, hopefully. So build with debug build so hopefully this explodes because that's what i uh what i needed to do uh yeah pro tip if you're gonna spend time writing a patch i highly recommend you coordinate with someone from oh tbot says in that case i have another patch that uses private apis to make the firefox pip window behave better but i'm not sure you'd accept that patch either maybe um you could file a bug under toolkit um, video audio controls describing what it is that you're trying to fix and then we could discuss the solution that you have ultimately uh, you know our designers and product people will make a call on whether or not we want to actually merge the change um, but we could talk about it who knows your idea might be brilliant your idea might be brilliant so let's let's find out all right uh, and what was the other thing? So yeah, explosion over here when we try and do a debug build. Um, on the Mac OS one, it's it's complaining about add ref marked override, but does not override any member functions in icon loader helper Coco. Let me just quickly remember icon loader helper Coco. Line 393 icon. I started with pro tip. Did I have a pro tip? I may have forgotten what I was going to say. Pro tip. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Pro tip. But this kind of ties into what uh, T-Bot was saying. Um, if you are going to write a patch, or, um, that's great. Patches are great. However, we would hate for you to waste your time writing a patch that we wouldn't consider merging. Like the native pip one the native mac os pip one so i like that would break my heart if someone showed up with a patch that's like it's clear that someone spent time and effort and they really thought through it and it's like bam here's a patch i'm ready to go and we go we we can't that doesn't match our goals and what we want to do with pip it doesn't match up with what we want to do so unfortunately we cannot accept that patch that would be a tragedy a tragedy of the highest degree um in terms of like software development in my mind is wasted work it's wasted work and wasted effort and wasted time time is precious so uh, what I would recommend is before you go off and spend a lot of time writing a patch that you want to get merged is that you talk to someone who works in that part of the code base to get a sense of whether or not they'd even consider accepting that patch um, maybe get a little bit of coaching redirection maybe some help from our designers so that if you want something to merge it has a high degree of merging because it's where we like where the the feature or the product needs to go it's where the puck is starting to, for for hockey hockey enthusiasts it's where the puck is going to be you want to skate to where the puck's going to be that's that's the gretzky model i think the gretzky model of the uh, gretzky approach to life so icon loader helper coco 39 h so yeah, I'm saying, hey, inherited because of icon loader helper, and we declare ref counting in here. And you're saying it's marked override, does not override any member functions. Oh, right. 
create helper. Helper doesn't. That's correct. That is correct. I used to have this inherit from like a specific, uh, like um, a specific kind of helper. I think. Let's take a look at the original, like an older version of the patch. Let's look at an older version of the patch. Let's look at like version three. And if we look at the header file for icon loader helper Coco, inherited. You know what? I don't think this. We never made, uh, like, uh, helper was never supposed to be ref counted right out the gate. Helper, oh, no, 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 here it is. Icon, no, I'm, class helper, widget, inline declare ref counting. Did I get rid of that? Let's take a look inside icon loader dot h. Okay, so we do declare ref counting on icon loader helper. Oh, on, yeah, on helper, icon, like, Mozilla widget icon loader helper has declare ref counting. Mozilla widget icon loader helper. So what are you talking about, icon loader helper Coco, when you say that I'm not inheriting? <gasps> Because I've got it in the wrong order, I think. Let's take a look. Let's just double check. Is it in the wrong order? Which order is it supposed to be in? Child class, then parent class. No, that's correct. I can load our helper, child class, parent class. Okay, now I'm confused. Implement helper. You inherit from helper, which does ref counting. So I don't know why it's complaining in this, this push log. Add ref marked override does not override any member functions. We're going to have to look at that. Hopefully, I can reproduce this build failure locally. Um, and what about over here? Is it a similar problem on Windows? It wouldn't surprise me. Let's take a look. T bot T. I'm curious about your patch. You said it uses private APIs to make the Firefox pip window behave better, but I'm not sure you'd accept that patch either. What does the patch do? I'm curious. How does it make it behave better? Let me know. Okay, so let's see if we can find the error. We have this massive log file, and now we have this fun game where it's like find the error. Meanwhile, my machine's building in the background, so it's like my cores are all saturated. Drawing this, uh, drawing this giant log file is going to tax my machine a little bit. We're looking for an error. Usually the errors happen towards the bottom. Looking for the error. Wait, unsuccessful. What happened? So why did it error? Where is the error? Where is the error? Let's see if we can use some uh, some finding. If I say icon loader, is there an error there? Yes, it's the same error as before. That's good. That means if we're going to uh, solve this for, um, if we're going to solve this for Coco, we'll probably sol figure out a way of solving it for Windows as well. Danny Colin says, is it just me 
Whereas the default pip toggle button, has it changed in Nightly? It has. We have updated the default toggle in Nightly. Um, we're trying a new version of the toggle. And we're going to be shipping it soon. And, you know, it, it, we'll see how it goes. Let's, let us let me show you what it looks like. Trying oh. A new version of the toggle. Oh, wow. And we're going to be shipping Opening up a black hole. And, you know, it, it, we'll see how it goes. Let's talking to myself let poking myself in the ear here let me poke myself in the oh. ear oh wow open in a black hole Opening up a black hole and, you know, it, who's this guy see how it goes. Let's talking to myself poking myself in the ear here let me poke myself in the oh. ear this is hilarious oh, wow. open in a black hole, a black hole. Yeah. all right anyways um this uh this is the button this is the new button right here Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna mute this. This is this this is too much. It's too much. Um, here is the button, and if you click on that, then we get your always on top window. And look, oh, I'm opening a black hole. All right, uh, that's always fun. So yeah, uh, that build error. It's the same one from Windows to to Mac OS. That's good. And I have a feeling I've just overlooked something. There's going to be an example I can apply. Um, oh, uh, Smurfy says, also, when you do debug builds, it only prints more output, not catching more errors, right? That's not true. That's not true. Yes, there is more output, but there are more assertions, and our assertions will cause the process to crash. If the ass there, are certain, there are different levels of assertions. Um, we have something that's called like just a Moz assert, and we have something called Moz release and Moz diagnose assert. Uh, Moz release assert, Moz diagnose assert. These uh, asserts, they're all designed to make it easier for us to make sure that conditions are what we expect them to be whenever certain code runs. And if their their assertions are not, uh, they don't evaluate to true, um, different things will happen. With a normal Moz assert, if you are in a normal opt build, we do not crash, but we log it. If it's a debug build, we crash immediately and we print the stack. Uh, we also do more leak checking on um, on debug builds. That's the only way you can do leak checking in like memory memory map stuff to like figure out what our heap looks like and try and find leaks. Excuse me. Um, I I I think those have to be debug builds. And Moz release asserts and Moz diagnose asserts, those will crash even release builds if, if those asserts are. So it's like different levels of assertions. Um, no problem, Smurf D. Ask me your questions. I'll tell you the closest thing I can think of to the truth. Um, I might not know all the answers, but I can sure fake it. Okay, so waiting for this to build, I'm trying to figure out what could have gone wrong here. Why, why would this not build? And, you know, why wouldn't that have been the case over here? Because I've been building on Windows for a while. So maybe if I build a debug build over here, we can race them. Is that a good use of time? Danny Colon asks, what's the meaning of life? The meaning of life is to find the meaning of life. I think that's the meaning of life is to search for and try and find the meaning of life. And it's asymptotic. I don't think you'll ever find it. Can you imagine how how much torture, like how, how um, imagine you knew the meaning of life and you just had answered the question and the meaning of life was to dig holes. That's the meaning of life. And, and that was it. Dig holes, that's the meaning. Worms have had it right for this whole time. Badgers, dogs in the garden, they've had it right. Dig holes, that's the meaning. And now, like, what do you... Imagine. Imagine, like, I can't imagine anything but a letdown as soon as someone knew... As soon as someone told you, like, we figured it out. This is the meaning of life. I, I'd probably feel a bit let down. I have a feeling the meaning of life is asymptotic. Um, it's like... You're always looking for it, and you'll never quite find it. And that's the meaning of life, is like the search, the search for Spock. Uh, Danny Colon says, hey, I'm a bioarchaeologist. That's mostly what I do. That's awesome, bioarchaeologist. 
That's killer. I I love that. So does that mean you um do you do, you're actually out there in the field like at dig sites and and you know you I've only seen movies. I've never been to a dig, but like you've got the grid and you've got the brushes and you've got the safari hat and you're digging up like animals like bones and stuff. Is that the idea? You're being really careful. I remember there was a toy um yeah, Indiana Jones style, like before he goes out in the field. Cuz like <laughs> when you think about it, Indiana Jones is just stealing. He's stealing stuff and he's putting it in a museum. He's stealing stuff, he's putting it in a museum. It's like uh why why do we like this guy again? I mean, he's charming. It belongs in a museum. I guess it's because other people are trying to steal stuff to uh <laughs> to do bad things with them like use the ark of the covenant to like power the the Hitler's army or something. But I don't know. I don't know where I'm going with this. Uh so Danny Cohen says that uh they work with animals. Not animals, sorry. Not animals, but humans. A paleontologist dig animals up. So he's digging up humans. Wacky. Oh, I hope I hope you're not grave robbing like from like recent times. Is this a fancy way of saying that you you go to cemeteries at night and dig people up? I'm joking, of course. That's that's creepy. Um, I'm gathering you probably mean people way from way back in the day. Um which I think is pretty cool when you figure out how people lived back in the day. They certainly didn't have compiler errors, I don't think. Imagine. Okay, what are we doing here? Uh, this build, is it almost done? Where are we at? We're building DOM still. This might take a couple more minutes. So while we're waiting for this, maybe let's see if we've got our uh, our icons. No, I do not have icons yet. Okay. So waiting on those icons to be polished up. Um, maybe we can figure out on Windows why the... Oh, yeah. There was a thing I was trying to figure out yesterday. Um, maybe we can figure it out today, which is uh, how to position the menu correctly whenever you click on it. Because right now it's... What we do when you click on it, and I'll show you the patch, is what we do is when we detect the click here, no, 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 here, we get the cursor position at the time of the click, and then we open the pop-up at that, at those coordinates. And that doesn't appear to be the correct thing to do. At least whenever you're uh, you're dealing with the sort of the collapsed frame like this, I got a feeling that uh, whenever you have this pop-up open, the cursor position is locked to where it was whenever you clicked on this. And that in order to get the updated cursor position, um, like I have a feeling a modal or like a nested event loop is being fired here. And part if you sample the uh, sample uh, the cursor position, it still thinks it's down here. And that in order to get the actual cursor position, you have to handle a message correctly from the message loop that's being fired whenever you click on one of those things. Uh, or the, the event that fires when you click on one of those things. Uh, Danny Cullen so, says, well, way back. In Canada, any time older than 1950 is considered to be ancient. Anything. So you're, wait, hold up. Hold up. So you're digging up graves? You're finding, you're digging up people from before 1950, but maybe in the 1940s? Wild. How do, how do, how do you opt in and how do you opt out? I'm curious. Like, is that the sort of thing that I should be worried about? Like, my my grandparents, like, <laughs> is there some kind of like a release form that these one needs to sign in order to be to like excavate these graves? I'm imagining. Like, I'm certain that all of this is above board. I'm being playful. I'm certain that this is all uh, above board. Totally, 
not Danny Colon in a grave at night, just digging people up. Uh, uh, Crumpled Wing says, get cremated as a as a way out. Yeah, that's one way. Or melting yourself down. I've heard that that is uh, another op- uh, option. You can liquefy yourself using acid. Um, burial at sea. Just, um, you know, drop yourself in a lake. Who knows? Uh, okay, so I was talking about the, um, you know, that whole issue with the, um, the position of the menu whenever you click on it. Now, the reason that uh, I'm using the cursor position is because I'm actually using an old form of the, of the structure that you pass to Windows in order to tell it to show that icon. I'm using... Um, like the the Windows 2000 version of what's called the notify icon info struct. Where is that thing? Notify icon. I'm using like an old version of it. And the reason I'm using the old version of it is because one of the things I noticed is that if I use the newer version of it, I can't get the 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 tooltip to work properly. And I thought that that was more important, the tooltip to show up rather than the um rather sorry rather than the uh the position of the menu that opened up like that was the engineering trade-off i made but i'd really like to solve this so that we get bo- the best of both worlds so maybe we can look at that today i was pretty frustrated yesterday trying to get all this to work i got the right position and then i realized that the tooltip didn't open so i had to revert everything but um let us take a look uh what i'll do is i'll start by updating the u version to the the one that allows us to um, get that get that information about the cursor, and I'll show you what I mean. Um, you can actually see it in the history because in diff eight I actually had it. I had it set to use. Oh, maybe it wasn't diff eight. Maybe it was diff seven. Yeah, notify icon version four. So let's put that in there. So as soon as I put that in there, uh, we also have to change a line in uh, the message handler because the format of the messages that come in changes. So I'm going to copy this line, these sets of lines, this set of two lines. I'm going to go over here and update this right here. What? Hold on. No, that's not right. I had it right the first time. And then I think I don't want to use the cursor point anymore. I want to use uh, get x param and get y param, I think. Yeah, get x param from the wp argument that's coming in. That will give us the coordinates of the, you know, like what the user clicked, or where the, the cursor is inside the, the, the little overflow menu. So I'm just gonna violate style constraints right now and just build this and we're gonna see what happens. So mock build. Danny Cohen says that they studied people from the late 1800s and early 1900s here in Quebec. They also study cremation. Oh, so your ashes might show up on Danny Colin's lab bench, just so you know. Uh, Smurf DL says, I'm kind of assuming that they're on places where it's not actual graves, but where it might build buildings soon and such. Oh. Like... Crime scenes? No, I think I'm... So, I think I know what you're saying. Like, places where they've turned burial mounds or, like, burial sites into, like, condos. Which is really kind of dark. But um, I guess it's it happens. Um, the other thing it reminds me of is, like, that classic trope of, like, mob hits where they hide murdered people inside of concrete for buildings they're about to go up like they find some foundation 
that's still wet and they put the body in the foundation and they I don't think that's what you're looking at, right, Danny Colin? You're not looking at crime scenes, right? How's our build going? Come on. This is taking a while. And the reason it's it's probably taking so long is I'm also doing a lot here. I'm I'm you know, recording and streaming takes a lot of processing power as well. Danny Colin says there's a lot of burial sites under buildings, especially in a big city like Montreal or Toronto. Fair. And it makes perfect sense. You know, I would imagine that, uh, you know, Toronto certainly was a lot smaller. And as you expand outward, you're invariably going to intersect a burial site. Um, I guess that's tricky. You know, you kind of got to figure out. I, I don't I'm I'm I imagine that there's a lot of like ethical questions here. Like, OK, do we disturb this land? What do we do here? That's very interesting. I myself am glad I don't have to make those ethical decisions. I make ethical decisions about browsers. Still waiting on my icons. I'm going to respond to a comment that just showed up. Oh, Danny Cullen says, it could happen, but normally it's the job of bioarchaeologists that are specialized in forensic science, you know, like in the TV show Bones. Oh, yeah, for the crime scene stuff? Gotcha. There was a comment that was just posted to a bug. Where is it? Bug number. There are users that I think are experiencing a leak. Bug 1658571. Let's take a look. Oh, lots of commentary in here. We've been trying to ba go back and forth. Such a memory leak is surely affecting most users. Is it normal here to not set the priority, not set and assign bugs? What kind of bug is more severe? Why is Mozilla sitting on its hands? Uh, we're, we're why is Mozilla sitting on its hands? Yeah, so it's like I asked for a memory report, and he's like, "Why aren't you prioritizing this?" We're waiting on more information to make an informed prioritization decision. Pri um, specifically, we're waiting on a memory report requested in comment 48 and 49 of this in comment 49 of this bug from one of the affected users so that we can understand the likelihood uh, we can understand the scope and impact of of any such leak we understand the scope and user impact and for, at that point we can make a prioritization decision. Notice that uh, this reporter is writing in bold and like, I would, sorry, like it's unnecessary to bold the text. I'm not gonna tell him that. But it's like, that's, don't don't be like this person. Don't be like this person. This, this, all right, save. Uh, Path30 asks, hi, would you recommend to learn the basics of C before moving on to C++? Hmm. I mean, you, C++ is a subset, sorry, a superset of C, so that um, you can be using a C++ compiler. Would you write and start with a C book? Maybe, maybe. I mean, I'm sure, would I recommend it? What would I recommend? I 
What I would recommend, once you have a sense of the sort of the control flow of the language, so just understanding the syntax of things like conditions and how functions are defined and the, the built-in primitives, etc. And then I would start looking at pointers and references and like that kind of indirection stuff. And that's going to be, you can do that in C or C++, because that's what burns most people, are pointers and the indirection. And at that point, you can start maybe thinking about the sort of more advanced C++ stuff like, like the abstractions around classes, like virtual methods and overrides and templates and all this sort of crazier stuff that C++ offers. Um, but I would start with the simpler parts of C and C++, which are like just the control flow of the language, how to express things like, you know, I want to pass this array by value. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, no, sorry. I want to pass this array by reference, not by value. I want to pass this array by reference. Well, how does that work? And get an understanding of like, of, of, how stuff gets passed between functions, who owns what. But to be honest, one thing you might want to learn instead is Rust. Um, Rust is a, is a systems language like C and C++, but it allows you, not only do you learn a lot of that, that stuff about like, you, there are similar um, abstractions and indirection and whatnot, but it will protect you from writing software that has like data races. And, you know, as soon as you start getting into more advanced stuff like concurrency, threads, that sort of thing, Rust can really protect you. So I would actually recommend picking that language up first and then maybe going back and looking at C and C++. What I've heard from people is that knowing Rust makes you a better C and C++ programmer. Because once you have, like, kind of Rust under your belt, the Rust belt, as it were, once you have Rust under your belt... Um, you start, it forces you to think about things that C and C++ doesn't force you to think about. And you then end up using patterns from Rust in C and C++ that are probably healthier, even you know whenever you're forced to use C or C++. So I would actually recommend you start with Rust. That's my recommendation. I think I've just bored the dog. He left. He's not a, I guess he's a scheme guy. He'd rather you use scheme. So the dog just left. Smurfy makes a classic joke. Once you have rust under your belt, you are not so rusty anymore. I love the wordplay. That's good stuff. Crumpled Wing says, is there a way to access a public archive at Task Cluster? Public archive? What do you mean? Like, so if, if you've... I, I think so. I think I know what you're talking about. You mean like uh, you're looking for uh, the actual build artifacts. So like here is a task cluster job, I guess. And what are these? Let's let's open this up in a private browsing. Oh, I'm not signed in, so it's okay. But also let's open this up in a private browsing window so I can see what it looks like from someone who's definitely not logged in. And here are all these things. Debug APK. If I click on that, what happens? You can just download it. Is that what you're talking about? Is there a way to access the public archive at Task Cluster? Like here is an, a bunch of APKs. Is this what you're talking about? I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. Um, for Firefox Reality, here are a bunch of APKs. I don't know what's being asked. Why is this? Oh, here we go. We've got our build error. Good. We made it. We made it, everybody. So we can investigate now. So icon loader helper Coco 37 error. Add ref marked override, but does not override any member functions. Is it because I forgot the, the implementation part? That might be. That might be. Like, I'm declaring that icon loader helper does ref counting, but where's the actual implementation? I think that's probably where it is. Icon loader helper Coco. Um, 
NS inline. Yeah, I don't think I implemented it. So the way you do that, once you've declared it, you have to do the implementation. And I think what you have to do. So for example, let's let's look at one of these examples again. Application accessible .h. We say that this class application accessible, which subclass is accessible wrap, and we say this macro says like we are declaring ref counting on this class. And it's inherited because accessible wrap also declares it. And application accessible is the subclass. Now, if we go inside the definition of this class, the where it's a um, where it's implemented. Let's see if we can find where that's implemented. Application accessible. Where is it? Class application accessible. Where is it? Oh, hold on a second. Second, I, I, not like that. It's like application accessible colon colon. That's what I want. Here it is. I have a feeling there is something else in here that's like ns in uh, impl impl no ref count add ref huh. Or is it because the parent class doesn't actually implement it? We say that icon loader helper, which is an icon loader, we declare ref counting. Is there impl ref counting? Impl. Ref counting. Declare. Here's where we, where we define it. Where do we actually do it? Declare. Impl. NS impl. Maybe that is an actor to implement the. Uh, I think that's what we want. Accessible, generic. So we implement add ref and release on read callback. Read callback is declared here. Do we input stream callback? Thread safe, I supports. What about the what about the declaration? Do I need to declare it as well? Let's find a different example. But those might be the two lines I need. Um, impl add ref and impl release. Let's find another example. Wake lock. Let's go to the definition of it. Hmm. When we declare ref counting, what do we do? Use this macro to declare and implement for a non XPCOM class. So it's supposed to declare and implement. Right, it declares and it implements it.
and then it's complaining that add ref marked override but does not override any member functions. So here it's like, hey, yeah, line 39 here. You're marked override. You're not override anything. Declare ref counting inherited. What is a macro? Implement add ref release class for class does not need to QI. When the most primitive ones can be no op. Do I need this? What happens if I remove this? Maybe I don't need it. Uh, so let's take a quick peek inside the chat. Looks like they want earlier versions, version 11 and earlier, says uh, Smurf D. So maybe that's what you're talking about. Okay, so we've got these uh, older versions. You're looking for earlier versions of Firefox reality. Um, let's take a quick peek. Yeah, ftp.mozilla.org. Let's take a look inside here. Do we have reality somewhere in here? I don't know. Like we've got, these are for releases. You're looking for like task cluster builds. I got a feeling those get recycled after a while. Like we, we don't store them forever. But if you can find the task cluster job, then maybe, maybe there'll be a link to the, the asset, but it might also just get destroyed after a while. I don't actually know. Uh, path zero says, path 30 says, well, I'm going to finish my basics of C course anyways, and then re look more into rust. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. Certainly like the basics of C is great. You know, get to know lo a low level language and where you're manipulating memory. Sure. Um, it's, it, I think that's great. Do it. I see a lot of people use rust, but don't really know what it is. Um, and then someone linked to the rust book. Can I type in rust in visual, visual studio? Yes. There are rust plugins for it. Um, Rust is a systems programming language that was, I think, incubated at Mozilla, but it's now like it's its own thing. Like the the Rust community exists separate from Mozilla. I think Mozilla, um, as part of the recent reorganization, and there was a wave of layoffs. We've basically like handed Rust off to the Rust community because it's like self-sustaining at this point, and like they are able to sustain themselves from donations and and um, you know other organizations that invest time and energy into keeping the language going because the rust language is used by them it's used by a lot of, of big companies not just mozilla and you should read the rust book there's some kind of program you download i think we'll find out when i need it how to get started with rust yeah you have to get like the rust compiler and that's true for like any um any programming language hey it worked hold on a second so if i do mock build again will this work Maybe that's as simple as that. Maybe I just have to remove those lines and then it just works. Yeah, you're gonna need a, a you need a compiler um, anytime you're gonna you need the program to turn the program that you write into a machine language that's called the compiler. On a Linux box and I think by default Mac OS, it'll come with I think GCC and G. It might come with Clang on Mac OS um, and the LLVM stuff. Uh, I don't know. It's been a while since I've, I've run a, um, uh, I need to try a, a Mac OS machine that I haven't manipulated, but I'm pretty sure it's, it comes with G plus plus and GCC. I could be wrong. And it, I think it comes with Clang. Uh, but for rust, you have to get it yourself. It, they're not, it's not a built-in compiler that ships with all these, uh, all these operating systems. Let's see if this worked. Um, meanwhile, I've got this build over here. It's still going, but I actually think I can 
probably stop it. I'm going to control C it. I'm going to go back to build with default and I'm going to build the patch that we wrote that changes us to use the different um, notify icon data structure for the icon because I actually want to show you that and maybe in the last couple minutes we can actually solve a problem and that's like um, figuring out why the tooltip wasn't showing up. That's what I'm hoping anyways because this build stuff takes a long time. It's not my favorite thing to show you uh, is, is building. Building, building, building. It's like if if I was the one actually doing the building, maybe that'd be more impressive. But like it's the computer doing it, and I just wait for it to do it. Um, and I'm kind of blocked. All right, here we go. We're we're linking here. Uh, Pat thirty says I got GCC installed, but I'm currently using the VS Stock one for compiling. It works just fine. Oh, so like Visual Studio will come with its own compiler as well. So Microsoft has its own compiler, the Visual Studio compiler. And yeah, that'll work. If you're on Windows, you can use the Visual Studio compiler, but uh, that will compile. It knows how to compile C and C++. Um, and they've got their own like C Sharp compiler thing. I think C Sharp. Is C Sharp a compiled language? I think they compile C Sharp down and Visual C++ and Visual Basic. I think they compile it down to like some kind of intermediate representation that's supposed to be like the .NET IR stuff. Blah, 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 blah. Um, So I guess you could say they're compiled. Um, so yeah, that's even on Windows. When we compile on Windows, when I like right now, I'm compiling on Windows here. I'm using Clang. I'm not using Visual Studio, and the reason for that is because Clang is an open source compiler, um, and we can patch it if we need to. I think we have patched Clang. For, uh, we've filed bugs and patched it which is a lot harder to do with the Microsoft compiler, which we've had to file bugs against. And then we're like at the mercy of Microsoft to ship a fix. Um, wow, I just got, how do we kick this person? Want to become famous? Buy followers, primes, and views on bigfollows.com. Bigfollowsstar.com. Uh, how do we kick this person? That sounds like an ad. How do we, how do we kick this person? I'm going to kick this person. I'm going to report them for spam. Oh, okay. So, yeah, you've. Thank you, Danny Colon, for timing them out. That's great. Feel free to just straight kick ban. Yep, there you go. All right, we've got our build here. Let's take a look. Thank you, Danny Colon. As usual, on the ball. Okay, so we have our build here. We're gonna start a chat. We get our little icon in a sec. So we have our little icon showing up. My head's in the way again, sorry. Let me move over here. We have our little icon, and now I'm gonna click on it. And the i the the mouse uh the menu opens up here. Now I want to wait until the icon folds into the overflow menu. So one way of doing that is to cause another icon to show up there. So I'll do that. And so now I've got like the screen icons in here. And now if I click on this, oh that's still not great. That's not great at all. What the what are, what? Okay, so what I need is like, well, on, oh, and the other thing to realize is that the tooltip should is, is no longer working. Like there was a tooltip before and now the tooltip is not working. And that's why I backed out this change last night. Um, it's, uh, I need that tooltip so that people know what these icons mean. And I don't know why the tooltip's not working. It's very frustrating. Let's reread the documentation. Now, documentation is the sort of thing that's like, no one's perfect at it. Uh, I'm actually glad that there is some documentation for this structure on the Win, uh, like the Microsoft MDN site, MDSN, MSDN, whatever you want to call this. 
But man, some of it's really opaque. Um, maybe that's just because this whole structure is kind of opaque and it's, they're, they're clamoring for backwards compatibility. But uh, let's talk a little bit about the, uh, the message that comes in whenever you use um, a version of Uh, wait a second. Version. Version. Show tip. Use the standard tool tip. Oh, wait. When Use the standard tool tip. Normally when new version is set to notify icon version 4, the standard tool tip is suppressed. If the application wants to show the standard tool tip, you have to spell... That's what I need to do. Hot! Diggity! That, I missed that. I missed this. You have to do show tip. That's why. I missed this last night. That's what was killing me. Oh, man. Oh, man. Shell. Notify. Icon. W. Nim. Show tip. M. Icon. Data total discovery i need to read this part where where is it i need to read this part of the documentation show tip i can't believe i missed that it was sitting right in front of me folks you saw it here me discovering the thing that i needed to do so now i do mock build binaries smurf d says rtfm i'm gonna table flip here smurf d um this is uh I can't say that this is the easiest documentation to read. Like this should be really straightforward and it was and I was tired. I was tired when I was reading this, but okay, fine. The other thing uh, is like what about the position of the uh the position of the mouse? When the U version member is notify icon version 4, applications continue to receive notification events in the form of application to find messages through the U callback message member, but the interpretation of LPRAM and WPRAM is changed. Uh, LPRAM returns the X anchor coordinate for notification events, and all mouse messages between, if any of these messages are generated by the keyboard, set to the upper left corner of the target icon. For notification events so it's supposed to be the coordinates of the click oh wait use of undeclared identifier nim show tip did i get that wrong nim nif show tip sorry nif not nim nif nif why is it nim add and nif show tip Nis hidden nif respect quiet time. Some of it's wait a second. No, these are flags. These are flags on you flags am i complete you know what sudden letdown sudden letdown these are flags and was i showing was i did i have show tip i just had nif tip oh i think it's supposed to be show tip what's nif tip nif tip the tip member is valid nif show tip is actually show it <sighs> All right, build. Really, there's a nif and an nif prefix. I know, like this is what I'm dealing with here. Path thirty. Yeah, I'm on both Windows and Mac. Like I'm, I'm using uh, my host machine. My main machine is a Mac machine over here, but I've got a remote session into a Windows machine where uh, I'm controlling a Windows box. So that's why I'm, I'm flipping back and forth. So this build still doesn't go. Why is that? Hmm. 
missing vtable, come motor helper, undefined symbols. Undefined symbols. Now I'm confused. If I put this back, it's a different error. Path 30 asks, how long have I been programming for? Depends it depends what you count as programming. Like it depends what you mean as programming. I've been programming professionally about nine or ten years. Um I've I had I went to school uh, and learned programming at school. And so I was at school for five or six years and I was programming a bit there. And before that, I, I fiddled with it just a little bit, but um, like I, I made a website for a band I was in. Um, I, I used to fiddle with QBasic when I was really young. So I had some grounding and things like loops and variables and stuff, but I didn't get really serious about programming until I was in university in school. And so I, you should, I guess you could say I've been professionally programming being, I've been paid to program like that. That's what you consider professional, um, for about nine years. All right. I am starting to get miffed. So let's see if we can figure out what's going wrong here. External ref count type, add ref expanded from macro inherited. It's marked override, but does not actually override anything. So it's complaining that icon loader helper doesn't actually declare ref counting. So what does, wait, declare ref counting, declare ref counting. Am I using this wrong? Like, let me see if some examples here of using declare ref counting inherited. So hypertext accessible wrap, what do you do? Uh, I need a simpler structure. That's too many layers of, too many layers of inheritance. I want a very simple structure. Sure, NS window base, NS window base. Do you declare ref counting? You don't. Oh, but you have base widget. Do you have ref counting? You have NSI widget. Do you have ref counting? Do you have NSI supports? Which will always be ref counted, I think. Oh boy, let's find a different one. I'm looking for something where the second item is probably oh, not an NSI. What's a cancelable runnable is an NSI thing. I got a feeling I'm using this thing wrong. What's it supposed to be? And as impl ad ref inherited? Maybe that's what I need. Like, I 
that was my original hypothesis that I needed some kind of impl in icon loader helper. add ref inherited and then uh, are they inside of a namespace I think they are Don't accessible Don't accessibility yeah okay so then I can just say icon loader helper Coco, and then the parent is icon loader helper. in alphabetical and I'll say icon loader helper this is a guess but let's see if it likes it any regrets on being a programmer regrets any regrets for being a programmer I can't say it's been very good for my posture. I mean, I, there's always the risk. Oh, no, that still doesn't like it. 39, did I do the right class? 39. This is for icon loader helper. Icon loader helper Coco. What is its inline declare ref counting inherited? It's inline. What if it's supposed to be not inline? Like, what if it's supposed to be NS declare? Is there one that's not inline? No. Declare ref counting. Here's where we like, we've got a, co a console utils and it declares ref counting, but it's final. So there will be no children. This one inherits file system security. We dec and this one's also final. Is that a pattern where like you are final and you do inline declare ref counting? I got a feeling I'm just using this wrong. Voice data, final, yeah. Uh, let's look at some old code. NPAPI, final. Yeah, you know what? I think I'm using this wrong. I don't think I'm supposed to be doing... Uh... Doing it this way. What are the other macros regarding ref counting? Pure vir virtual, declare pure virtual ref counting. What? You know what that is? Declare 
ref counting, any line declare, cycle collect, thread safe ref counting. virtual if I want ref counting it's like add ref case sensitive plus cycle collecting As add ref what was the other one Pause. I think I'm going in circles here folks impl add ref inherited what is that used for who uses this Implement ad ref inherited. Sure, canonical browsing context. This is recent code. Browsing context implements these things. browsing context saying it's inherited cycle collection pending remoteness change this is interesting so here's an instance of a helper class that has NS inline declare ref counting and Here is the implementation. It'll be in here, pending remoteness change. And I got a feeling when it declares it, like it's actually putting the whole guts inside here, and that's great. Now the compiler is complaining because whenever I do inherited, NS inline declare ref counting inherited. The code that it in generates is me overriding add ref and release. It does not override any member functions. So it's almost like it's never even heard of add ref and release inside the base class, which I'm inheriting from, icon loader helper. It's never heard of add ref and release. But that's what this declares ref counting it adds an add ref and release name of the class a statement that is executed when the object's ref count drops to zero name of the macro to be used is the return type of the add ref and release methods optional override mark the add ref and release methods as overrides mm. yeah but i've never seen anyone else doing that it's because let's destroy optional override then there's declare ref counting Optional override. Like, 
So like if I did this, let's see if it likes it. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, let's see if we have our tooltip. And then I think I'm going to call it because I've been going for a while and I need, I haven't actually eaten yet. I'm hungry. So we've got our, well, we've got our missing icon, actually. That's no good. And no tooltip. No good. Doesn't like it. But that shows up. So what's going on here? Using show tip. Oh, you know what, as well, I also need to, I can't just have the one, I have to have both. Nif show tip. I don't know why the icon's not showing up, by the by. Let's build it again. And this one explodes, cause... All right, I'm gonna have to ask someone who knows more about this stuff. Uh, I, I can't remember why this is. Um, I'm sure it's something simple. Only virtual member functions can be marked override. <sighs> I will figure it out. It's something simple, I'm sure. I'm just missing it. Okay, once this is done building, I'm going to see if uh, we get our tooltip with that show tip flag. And if so, I'll feel a lot better. I'll feel actually pretty upset that I didn't notice that yesterday, but that's because, you know, I was pretty exhausted. So that will be my excuse. So for some reason, no icon, but we do have the tooltip. Hooray! Smurf D asks, is it that you don't have enough arguments or too many? That causes it to think you want to override it. I actually don't even want to override it. <laughs> the the subclasses the subclasses should be oh so we got our tooltip. That's great news. For some reason the icon's not showing up. Less great news. Uh need to figure out why that is. But uh hooray. I wonder why it's not showing us the icon. But in the meantime, um hooray yeah I, I don't actually want to override it what i really really want what i want what i really really want is for the helpers to all just be ref counted and if you subclass the helper you get ref counting that's it that's all i want so like ns inline declaration ref counting should supply us with this um, and then what's it going to use for class is there a type okay for ref counting it does that and then I just want all of the child classes to inherit it I just don't think I'm doing it right. All right, I'm going to call it here. Hey, thanks so much for watching this episode of The Joy of Coding. Uh, you know, really interesting. We figured out just by reading the manual. I'm going to blame documentation and my own tired eyes on that. Uh, uh, you know, we've got our tooltip showing up. Icon's gone, but, you know, that's the balance. Um, we'll see how it goes. Hey, uh, yeah, thanks for watching episode 226 of The Joy of Coding. I'm not sure if I'm going to stream next week. Um, there's some stuff going on in the house, uh, and I might be away from my computer, so, uh, we'll see. Um, at the very latest, though, I will stream again in early October, so just keep an eye out, but follow me on Twitter if you want updates. Thanks so much for watching. You've all been great. 
Um, and I'll talk to you soon. Take care of each other and see you soon. Um, bye. See ya.